Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Can you please confirm? Okay. So, today is day 7 of CUT PG Pradham series. And today we are going to learn a very interesting topic. A topic that is in use in everyday life. Not directly, but indirectly. Are you thinking how it is you know, related to us indirectly. As you can see here, the topic for today's lecture is animal and plant cell culture. Right? So obviously in day-to-day -day life, we don't do these cell cultures ourselves. So we are not directly connected, but how indirectly? Any idea? Anyone? We are very dependent upon these technologies. Any idea? Let's see. Who can tell me this? Who can tell me this? Any idea how we are indirectly highly dependent upon this animal and plant cell culture? Okay, so do you know this animal cell culture? This is widely used in study of cancer. How? Because cancer cells work very differently from the cells of our body, the natural cells, right? So how do we characterize the cells of the cancer? How do we know how they are being, how they are working? It is because of this animal cell culture. Yes, 3-2, you're right. In animal for drug production and beverages, we do use this animal cell culture. Vijaya Lakshmi, absolutely. Plant cell culture is used to produce the disease-free plants that we eat. We need a lot of these disease-free plants nowadays because that reduces the use of pesticides because pesticides can be harmful. It can deteriorate the soil as well. The normal microflora of the soil can also get deteriorated if we use a lot of these pesticides. Not only that, Apart from pesticides, we use fertilizers. So if we can produce some elite quality plants, then, of course, that will reduce the use of these uh, chemicals. Absolutely. T2, absolutely right. For production of heat and salt tolerance. So see, we are so much dependent upon these technologies. Now, the first question that comes to us is, what is this cell culture? What is this? Well, cell culture, that refers to the removal of the cells from the animal or plant. And then we grow it in an artificial environment. 
right so are we all ready to learn more about this animal and plant cell culture if you are all ready type bio bring it on let's see How many of you are all set to learn more about this? Oh yeah, that's great. So my name is Shomrita and I'm going to discuss the important features of this animal and plant cell culture and also I will be discussing some previous year's question. Okay, just to give you an idea about what kind of questions you might expect. Actually, you see these questions that comes, you will find that they are very direct. If you know the concept, it will be clear to you. So we will be focusing on the concepts, right? So first and foremost, when we are going to discuss about the animal cell culture. So as the name suggests, this involves the extraction of the cell from the tissues or from the organs. Either we can take the tissue we can take the tissue or we can take the organ extracts. Okay. And then we can study what? Study the cell growth. We can study differentiation. We can study the ident we, we can actually identify the growth factors which are very important because many diseases they actually are centered around the malfunctioning of these growth factors. And we can also understand the mechanisms which are underlining the normal uh, cell function. Okay, various kinds of function that the cell perform. So all of these studies we can do by removing the tissue from the animal. Now, obviously, there are different ways by which we can remove the tissue. We will discuss that in the next few slides. Now, just for your information, can, okay, let me ask you. Do you know exactly when this cell culture was established? Or can you tell me an approximate year, if not the exact year, at least an approximate close to it, when was the first human embryonic stem culture done? Any idea? Human embryonic stem culture because this is the first milestone that happened in this area it's not far behind you know this is 2020 right this is the year 2020 and the first breakthrough the first milestone came in 1998, not far behind, 1998, when Thompson and Gerhardt, they were the one who isolated the and cultured the human embryonic stem cell. And after that, many other milestones came up. Okay, there was uh, tissue engineering and clone uh, human baby productions, all of these happened after this successful culture. So, what is tissue culture? This is in vitro maintenance and propagation of isolated cells, tissues or organs in appropriate artificial environment. Now, see one thing. When our cells or the tissues are inside our body, it is getting some nutrition from the body itself, right? When I'm taking it out and I'm culturing outside in that artificial environment or what we can call it as in vitro culture, right? Outside the normal condition, in vitro culture. 
we need to provide that environment, that temperature, that pH, that nutrition. Everything is required, isn't it? So one of the main feature about this tissue culture that we need to keep in mind is definitely the growth media. Now, what are the things that goes into this media composition? One is your growth factor and the one is the nutrients. Now, as you can all, as you all know about it, or I hope that you know about it, that growth factor is different and nutrition is different, okay? Though they are used quite together, but they are two different things. So to maintain a healthy and continuous growth of the cells, it is very essential that the conditions stimulated in this in vitro con uh, you know, condition are almost identical to the one in in vivo. Okay, so we need to select an important, uh, I mean, we it becomes very important to select a proper nutrient media that can uh, support the optimum uh, proliferation of the cells and compiles with the need of the experiment. Now, this media, depending upon the composition, can be of two types, primary two types. One is the natural media. Another one is the artificial media. Now, what can come under your natural media? From the word you can understand, if it is natural, it means naturally occurring fluids. Those are placed in this media, okay? The naturally occurring fluids. What can be the naturally occurring fluids? For example, you have the plasma, you have the serum, you have the lymph, you can have the human placental cord uh, serum. Okay, you can even have the amniotic fluid you can have the pleural fluid. You can have the, um, uh, you know, the fetal cuff. All of these can be used as natural products in the natural media because all of these are going to provide the nutrients and the growth factors. Apart from that, that goes with the biological fluid, okay? Natural media, one factor is the biological fluid that can be used. Biological fluid. Now, another thing that is needed here is definitely the tissue extracts. Okay? The tissue extract. So, the tissue extract can be uh, mainly which are used are from the uh, liver. They are from the tumors. They are leukocytes, spleen, bone marrow. Even uh, extracts of the bovine and uh, chicken embryo as well. And the third thing that you need here is some clots because that provides a media. So clots like your plasma clots or coagulants. Okay. Because cells when they grow, you, uh, you know, animal cells, they tend to cluster together and they need a base. So you need that clot for that base production. Now, coming to the artificial media. Artificial media, this is produced by adding the supplemental nutrients to meet all the specific uh, requirements of the cells which are used, okay, and which are ideal, I mean, which are used to create the ideal environment. So, on the basis of specificity of need of cells, media can be grouped into serum containing media serum free media chemically defined media protein media so serum containing media can be the serum serves as media for the carrier of nutrients growth which are insoluble for example the fetal bovine serum serum free media means obviously you're not using the serum so such as media containing the controlled amount of proteins and are used for single cell type 
cultures, but obviously these are less prone to contamination. Chemically defined media, which comprise contamination-free organic and inorganic ingredients specific to the needs of the cells. And then we have the protein-free media, which lack any type of protein in the medium. And this is used to promote the superior growth of protein expression of the cells. Right? So see here, we are going into the facts and figures of the media composition. Right? So, yes, before we go forward, if you want to know more about all these details, all these classes, because we here are to help you out, right? So don't forget to download the Biotechnica official app because you do get a lot of free classes here absolutely free classes to get a lot of knowledge to get a lot of insight into many different topics and of course you get an update about the opportunity job opportunities there are webinars for your extra knowledge for i mean to get the latest idea about what is happening in the current scenario of this um life science field so don't forget to download the official app if you have not downloaded yet and definitely log in to the Biotechnica Telegram group for more assistance. And this is the link which is here because we are here to help you out. In these short, short uh, uh, webinars that we have or these uh, classes that we are conducting in the YouTube, this is definitely for your for you people, for you to understand what is what is needed for all these different kinds of examination. Now, if you want to know more about uh, many other examinations, more about how to prepare, how to you know attend uh, uh, these webinars, what are the tips and the tricks and everything, come to us. We are here to help you out, and this is the two ways where you can definitely find help. So, the next question that comes to the mind, how are cell cultures obtained? How are cell cultures obtained? So, there are three ways, commonly used uh, ways to culture, to obtain these uh, initiate the cell culture one is the organic organ culture the next one is the primary explant culture and the third is the cell culture now organ culture what is organ culture anyone Organ culture. See, uh, here, from the word you can understand, we are either taking the whole organ from the embryo. Remember, it is from the embryo that we have to take. Okay? Or we can take the partially adult organs. Partially adult organs. Okay, for our culture, we can't take any other thing. So these cells uh, in the organ culture, they are maintained in the differentiated character. Now, uh, this word, the new word, differentiated. What does this mean, differentiated? This is very, very important word. You know, three words are here. 
uh, differentiated, uh, redifferentiated, undifferentiated. These are very important words. In case of animal culture, we are going to use a word differentiated. Differentiated means the cells here that you have taken from this uh, embryo, the organs from the embryo or the partially adult organs, the cells here already have their characteristics set. Their functional activity is also set. Okay, and they also retain their in uh, their in vivo architecture. So the, that's why we call it that's differentiated. Okay, they have already channelized and being a particular organ. So one problem using this is that they don't grow rapidly and the cell proliferation is very limited to the periphery of the explant because uh, these cultures cannot be propagated for very long time. And uh, a fresh, uh, explant, you know, uh, subculture is required to maintain these cultures. But even after such, uh, you know, uh, de demerits, these cultures are very used. These are used in the production of hormones. These are used to examine the effects of drugs. And, uh, you know, there are many other uh, use of it. The main two is the production of hormones and the effect of drugs. Next, we have the primary explant cultures. The primary explant cultures means it is going to use fragments of the excised animal tissue, which can be maintained in different uh, ways. Now here what happens is the tissue, it adheres to the surface by the extracellular matrix, like your collagen and the plasma clot. And uh, this actually gives rise to the cells migrating from the periphery of the explant. So this culture is known as your primary explant culture and uh, this migration that happens they are known as your outgrowths. Okay, so from if, if you take this as a culture, as a tissue, the migration uh, happens outward. So these are known as your outgrowths. All right. Now, mainly what is the use of these cultures? If you uh, understand. If you want to know what is the use of this culture, mainly it is used to study the cancerous cells. Now, can you tell me, can someone tell me quickly why it is used specifically to study the cancer cells? Cancerous cells. Any idea? I've already given you a point. If you have uh, listened carefully, I've given you a hint already. The characteristic of this uh, primary explant culture, that is the answer. Now, who can tell me? What was the characteristic? If some of you have missed it, stay till the end. You will be provided with a link where you can download the uh, study notes. Okay? So stay till the end. Just download the study note. But for the timing, who has paid attention? Who can tell me? Yes, self-fragmentation. Cell fragments, is that Shramalina? I hope I have pronounced your name correctly. Right now, what did I say here? You have the tissue and there is outgrowth, right? And the cells here adheres to your extracellular matrix. Does cancerous cells adheres to your excess, uh, uh, adheres? Is there any property of adherence for cancer cells? No. So that is why you can easily study the cancerous cells if you if, if you go for this primary explant cal, uh, culture. It helps you to analyze the characteristic of the cancerous cells more. Okay? Fine. Now going to the cell cultures. 
Now, cell culture. This is the most commonly used method of the tissue culture, and it did, and it is uh, generated by collecting the cells growing out of the explant or dispersed in the cell suspensions. What is a cell suspension? It is uh, you know floating, uh, free in the you know the cells are actually floating free in the culture media. So it's a liquid culture. And the cells are freely floating there. That, that is something what you call as suspension cultures. Now, how to obtain the cells for the cell culture? It can be either done enzymatically or by mechanical means. All right? Either enzymatic or mechanical. Now, the cell culture are of three types. You have the precursor cell cultures, which is undifferentiated cells committed to differentiated you have the differentiated cell culture which is completely differentiated cells that have lost the capacity to further differentiate that means you just cannot revert it back and there is a stem cell culture which is undifferentiated that means the programming has not been established. You can program the cells to be of a particular kind. So if you want the cells to become a liver cells, it will become a liver cells. If you want it to become a kidney cells, it will become a kidney cell. So these are undifferentiated cells, okay? So you have the three different types of cell culture. Now, apart from that, you do have this monolayer cultures as well. Monolayer. This is anchorage dependent culture of usually one cell. Mind it. See, I've already used the word mono, which means one cell. Okay, it is one cell in thickness which is continuous layer of cells at the bottom of the culture vessel. And next you have the suspension culture. So as I've already told you, these are like kept in the fluid, the liquid media. So some of the cells are non-adhesive and they can be mechanically kept in the suspension, unlike most of the cells that grow as monolayers. For example, it can be the leukemia. Okay? Now, so far we were talking about the cells adhering to a matrix. Right? Adhering to something, a base. And one more thing we have already said that you need to subculture the cells. Because you see, when you are you have prepared the primary culture, no, this will grow up till a particular volume, a particular uh, limit. Okay, there is a limit of growth. You can't go beyond that. So what you need to do is if you want to maintain this cells, if you want to maintain this culture, you have to subculture it. So what you do is you take the fresh media, you take a part of the cells and you put them in the fresh media where they are again going to proliferate and, you know, again going to fill up this vessel and grow, grow till a particular limit. And again, from there, you can go for subculturing. This is what is known as your subculturing. And in case of your animal tissue culture, we don't use the word subculturing, but instead we use the word passaging. Okay? Passaging is the word that is used in case of your animal cell culture. So what is passaging? It is a process of subculturing cells in order to produce a large number of cells from the pre-existing ones. Okay? Now what can be the benefit of this passaging, cell passage. Can someone uh, tell me 
what do you think can be the benefit why do we uh, need to passage the cells one is definitely to maintain the culture okay otherwise they will die but any other thing that is coming to your mind any other possibility come on let's have everyone participating in the class let's all learn together because we teachers at biotechnica we love to learn together we want all of you to participate together doesn't matter if it is right or wrong participation is more important sharing your ideas are more important and that is what we do in our class as well so here also i'm insisting you let's see any other idea what can be the advantage why do we need to passage the cells why do we need to passage the cells no one i find so many of you are here cell passage okay let me share so subculturing it produces oh yes here you are i got the message late japreet maintain pure line definitely good so we can definitely very good japreet actually so one advantage of cell passaging it can be to produce a more homogeneous cell line to produce a more homogeneous cell line second to avoid senescence which is associated with prolonged high cell density yes supply proper nutrition to the cell to definitely for proper growth absolutely good tree two yes that can also be a uh, reason of course i'm glad that all of you are responding now see the problem here is there are benefits of cell passaging definitely but the problem is here the cells are all adhered together and also adhered to the vessel okay so it is not easy to just take them out you know splitting these cells it involves the transferring of a small number of cells into each new vessel right but if the cells are adhered to the surface of the tissue culture flask or the dish then what we have to do is we have to use the proteins okay i mean we have to use the uh, uh enzymes which will degrade the proteins because it is adhering with the help of the proteins so protein secreted by the cells from a tight bridge between the cell and the surface the mixture of trypsin edta is used to break proteins at specific places trypsin is either protein degraded or proteolytic so it hydrolyzes the pepsin digested peptides 
by hydrolysis of peptide bonds. And EDTA sequesters certain metal ions that can inhibit trypsin activity and, of course, enhance the efficacy of the trypsin. So when we are using trypsin EDTA, the trypsin is doing what? It is degrading the protein. And EDTA is doing what? The sequestering certain metals which can inhibit the trypsin activity. So it is like giving a clear path to the trypsin action. Okay, clearing the roadway, you can say, for the trypsin to act. And this is the flow chart which is telling you how we go for this trypsinization, which is nothing but, you know, uh, clearing all these adhering, adherence of this cell. So we first rinse the monolayer culture, then we add the trypsin, incubate, then stop the trypsinization, spin the cells, add fresh media, count cells, and then seed the new flux. Seed the new flux means subculture, okay? Transfer some cells into the new flask. And then, of course, we incubate at the optimum temperature. Clear? So, uh, if, if you want this uh, pathway and all, again, I will insist you to stay till the end because you're going to get uh, all these information over there. Okay? In the... Uh, material that we will provide you, you will get all the informations. All right. Then let's move into the primary culture. Now, first and foremost, there are different types of these cell cultures depending on the cells that have been used to culture. If you remember, there were different, um, you know, Places from where we can take the cells. We can take it from the organs, right? We can use the embryonic organs. We can take the, um, the uh, adult organs. I mean, not the, uh, the young adult organs. Okay, we can take that. We can uh, take the uh, cells by enzymatic ways, by mechanical ways. So depending upon where we are taking the cells, we have mainly two types of cell culture. One is a primary, another one is obviously the secondary. First, let us quickly talk about the primary cell culture. So primary cell culture, this actually refers to the condition in which the cells are either extracted directly from the organ or the tissue of the organism so if you are, you know, taking it out directly, if you are out, taking it out directly, it can be, it is mostly actually by the mechanical method. Okay, direct removal is mostly by the mechanical method. Another way can be the indirect. Indirectly. Now, indirectly is mainly the enzymatic method. Okay, enzymatic or you can say the biochemical means. All right. And wherever you take it from, you have to proliferate it under appropriate conditions on the suitable containers. Okay. How long will you proliferate them and in the in vitro condition until they occupy all the available substrate. Now, this state, when they have occupied all the substrate, okay, all the available uh, substrate, this state is known as your confluency. This state is known as a confluency, okay? So, at this stage, it becomes indispensable to transfer the cells to a new container with the fresh medium. Again, why you need to do that? To enable the continuous growth. Okay. Now, what are the features or what is this uh, importance of this primary culture? Primary cultures, they are 
morphologically like the parent cells, the primary cells actually, the primary cells, they are morphologically like the parent cells. And they are also capable of only limited number of cell divisions after which they enter the non-proliferative stage, which is known as a senescence. And after entering the senescence, they eventually die out. All right. Now. Based on their growth, the primary cell cultures are further divided as adherent or anchorage dependent primary cells. So here the cells, they require a solid surface. As you can see here, they require a solid surface for the growth and attachment. And not only that, they propagate as monolayers. This is very important. They propagate as mono layers. Okay, which is attached to the surface of this container. Now, this attachment, this is essential for the proliferation and even for the cells, which are uh, actually for proliferation because often the cells are susceptible to contact inhibition okay so this is the growth uh, you know if there is a contact inhibition the growth it will uh, cease and if this cells they have overgrown the culture vessel then of course the growth ceases at that point so mainly in this case, the tissue uh, derived cells, these are the anchorage dependent cells and the examples are obviously the human fibroblast and the epithelial cells. Now there is another category which is your anchorage independent cells. Okay, or which are suspended in the media. So they do not require a substratum for attachment and they can obviously grow in the liquid nutrient medium. Examples can be the hematopoietic cells which you have taken from the bone marrow, spleen or blood and the cells of the cell lines derived from the malignant tumor. Now one benefit of this primary cell culture, one of the benefits, They are more similar to the parent plant. This is the benefit. Okay. They are considered to be more physiologically similar to the in vivo cells. But again, the culture of these primary cells, they are quite difficult. So, this is another picture which is depict, depicting the primary cell culture by differentiation and the one by the adherence, all right? And this is what is showing you the primary cell culture by, you know, the cell different types. So, you can have the epithelial cells, the endothelial cells. You can have the fibroblast-like cells, you have the lymphoblast-like cells, you have the neural cells. All of these can be cultured in the primary cell culture. Now, the next one, as I told you, is the secondary cell culture. So, these are, these are actually uh, secondary means. They are obtained from the primary. Okay. So primary you have already established from there you have subcultured, you have taken out some cells. So these are your secondary cell cultures. Okay. So you can say that these are, uh, you know, uh, often they cause this phenotypic and genotypic uniformity of the 
population so uh, they are taken out or they are subcultured to maintain this homogeneous population okay and of course again to prevent the senescence now depending on the lifespan of the cells cell lines are categorized into finite cell lines and continuous cell lines finite means there is a limit okay so these are formed by the first subculture remember first subculturing of the primary cells and they possess a limited lifespan with the limited number of cell divisions after which they senesce and die out but this proliferative potential of some human uh, in finite cell lines they could be extended by obviously introducing some viral transformation like uh, sometimes your sv40 can be used as well okay so uh, they express a phenotypic in, uh, intermediate to the finite and continuous cell culture now apart from that you have the continuous cell culture continuous cell culture they produce an indefinite passaging value so these are produced due to the stable heritable uh, mutation in the finite cell lines which actually give rise to these unlimited proliferative potential so one and only one example of this continuous cell culture can be anyone can anyone tell me one example of this continuous cell culture can be again whoever has paid attention will be able to tell me because all you have to know what is this continuous cell culture and where it is applied Yes, Jaya Sai Ramya, absolutely cancerous cells. Very good, excellent, cancerous cells. Okay, so this is the overview of your animal cell culture. Are we all ready to face some questions? Take up some questions. Are we ready? If you are ready, type B I O. Let's see. Quickly recap what we have done, and start typing B I O. How many of you have followed? How many of you had uh, ready to take up the quiz? Okay, three two is ready. Good. Okay, Jay Shri Ram, Jay Preet, Pratik. Others, not confident. Not confident yet. Okay, let me tell you, you get very simple. Aviksha, yep, absolutely. So let's get into the question. The number one question. is this so which one of the following is the most appropriately describes the term cell line who is the first one to give me the answer these are the questions from your previous uh, year cuet quet paper okay jash uh, shreyram is saying 2 jayprit is saying 2 okay so i have many answers which are telling me 2 
Absolutely. Very good. Very good. I'm so happy that you have followed. It is number two. Subculturing of the primary culture. This gives you the monolayer culture, the cell line. Right? Good. Very good. Now, the second question. Maximum application of animal cell culture technology is for insulin, interference, edible proteins, vaccines. For all of these, you use the animal cell culture. But as I told you at the beginning, we are very much dependent upon this, uh, these technologies indirectly. Okay, some of you are saying four, some of you are saying one. Let's see what the majority of you tell, gives, tells me. Okay, Pratik is giving me two answers. Pratik, any one. You have to choose any one. The correct answer is vaccines. See, there are so many vaccines in the market. So many vaccines. Right? And many of these vaccines, most of these vaccines, we... We need to produce the vaccines in mass culture, mass production. We have to have that. Okay. So for that, we definitely use these animal cell cultures. So how do you find the questions? Very difficult or easy? These are all from your previous year's question, uh, previous year's paper. Yes, actually the questions are easy. So if you just study uh, these parts, if you just study, uh, you don't have to go into very details. Uh, from today's lecture, I hope you have understood that. You don't have to go into the very details, but you have to touch up all the essential parts, all the essential points, and just have a good knowledge about these essential points. Okay? Because the questions will be coming from these sections only, not the very depth of it. Okay. So let's move into the plant cell culture now. So plants also, they can't go far behind because we are also dependent upon the plant. Plant is giving us food, right? We are so dependent upon plant. Now, to study the plant cell culture, no, we first have to for understand the word totipotency. Totipotency. Because it is only the plant cells which are totipotent. There are no other cells which are totipotent, except the plant cells. What is totipotent? You know, animal cell cultures we were discussing, animal cells, they are pluripotent. Okay? Totipotent. They, these uh, cells, let me, let me write it like this, the meristematic cells, The meristematic cells, these are the cells which are similar to your stem cells, which are constantly growing. Exactly. Jaya say, uh, say Ramya, 
absolutely right. Pratik, absolutely right. Manisha, yes, right. Very good. Okay, for others. So meristematic cells, the uh, plant meristematic cells, they will give rise to different differentiated tissues. Right? Differentiated means already it has been channelized. It has already got some characters to form something. So maybe it can be a leaf tissue. It can be a root tissue. It can be the stem tissue, something. Okay, The functionality of the tissue has already been programmed here. That is a differentiated cell or the differentiated tissue. You can redifferentiate the cells. This is the only character available for the plants. This makes a plant culture so unique. This is what is total potency. Okay, the ability to give rise to the whole plant You can develop any part of the plant from any part of the cell. Okay, you can take any cell, you can take any differentiated cell. To be very precise, you can take any differentiated cell and make it re-differentiate. That is why it is called totipotency. But in case of plant cell, in case of animal cell, it is not possible to take a differentiated cell and again, redifferentiate it. Okay, if you take a liver cell and if you want to make it into a kidney cell, it is not possible in case of plant animal cell culture. That's why the word used is pluripotent. If you want to channelize, if you want to make a particular cell, you have to use the stem cells in case of plants, in case of animals. Only stem cells can give rise to the uh, different cells, okay? But in case of plants, if you take a leaf, this is a differentiated cell, you place it in a culture media, it will start forming the callus. A callus is nothing but a group of undifferentiated cells. Okay, let me write it like this. It's very important. Make a note of it, everyone. This is differentiated. This forms a callus which is undifferentiated. And from the callus, you can again channelize it to form the shoot or the root, which is again a differentiated. So now we call it as redifferentiated because we are differentiating it once again. Okay, three words are very, very important in case of your plant cell culture. Now, callus is not equivalent to explant. Okay, let me clear this point. Callus is not equivalent to explant. If you take this leaf, if you take a piece of this leaf, and if you place it in the media to form the callus, then this leaf part will be known as your explant. This is known as your explant. You can take a tip of the shoot. In fact, okay, can someone tell me what was the first uh, material or what was the first thing that was used in this plant cell culture? Which, uh, okay, let me tell you it is a vegetable. Okay, that hint I can tell you. Which is a root actually. Yes, Saviksha, absolutely, it's carrot. Very good. No, no, no. It is carrot. From the carrot, this, uh, from the carrot, you take out the cambium part, okay? This cambium is now known as the explant. This is the explant. This carrot is your explant, actually. 
you place it in the media you form the callus from the callus you can form the entire plant of carrot manisha jaypreet absolutely your plants tissue culture started with the experiment uh, with the carrots very good okay so again since we are doing all these culturing in the in vitro so here also the nutrients the choice of nutrients is very very important now in case of plants we have two categories of nutrients one is a macronutrients one is a mi uh, micronutrients macro is from the word you can understand we need need it in huge quantity right but micro we need in a minimum quantity okay so accordingly when we prepare the media we choose the proportion of these macro and the micro nutrients accordingly because a, a disbalance in the ratio will not allow the plant to grow all right so uh, so there are different types of medias which are used the most common one is the morashic and the scooch and white spacer media is also definitely used but the most common one is morasig morasig and scooch it was developed in 1962 to optimize the tobacco callus system and it contains high concentration of nitrate potassium and ammonium so this is widely used in tissue culture for most plants suitable for pilot experiment or when research is starting because it has a balanced composition of the nutrients but apart from morasig and scooch depending upon what uh, explant you have chosen and what you are targeting to produce you can definitely uh, select any other media which has got its own characteristics so some of them are uh, having high concentration of calcium copper magnesium some are having uh, you know uh, these uh, lower levels of the organic nutrients are lower than the ms media so different compositions they are slightly different in their compositions okay that depends upon what is your experiment how you have designed the experiment okay so the different types of cultures and we have already discussed this three words differentiated dedifferentiated and redifferentiated now let us go into the different types of cultures which are used here okay one more thing i want to mention regarding the media before i come to this different kind of culture there is something known as a basal media right uh, yeah here is the word basal media let me just give you an insight of what is a basal media <clears throat> a media which is just comprising of the macro and the micronutrient only the micro and the macronutrient that is known as a basal media okay so when you are establishing a callus you just need a basal media so morashig and scooch is this is also a basal media now from that callus if you want to produce a root or if you want to produce a shoot you have to use the hormones which are nothing but your growth factors so like for the development of the root you can note it down somewhere for development of root from the callus you need high proportion of auxin the auxin and the cytokinin ratio should be such that you have more amount of auxin for the case of your shoot production you need more amount of cytokinin okay so when you add these hormones with the basal media then it produces a specific media yes jayashri uh, jaya sai ramya auxins absolutely manisha absolutely auxin and cytokine this ratio is very very important apart from that gibberellin is also used you can use gibberellin also okay but you don't use ethylene remember that you don't use ethylene okay so coming to the different types of cultures 
if you take the tissue from the embryo, then it becomes an embryo culture. If you take the tissue from organ, then it becomes organ culture. If you have established a callus and from that callus you want to produce a plant, then that becomes a callus culture or callus culture. Or you can have the cell cultures where you are just producing the callus, okay? The mass of undifferentiated cells. Now, what you can do is if you take the embryo culture, there are two types of embryo culture. One is your direct embryo culture. Another one is an indirect embryo culture. Direct embryo culture means you are just taking the embryo Okay, and you're placing it in a media which is containing the hormones. So this embryo differentiates to produce a root and also it starts producing the shoot. In case of indirect embryo culture, you first produce a callus which is in the basal media and then expose this callus to the hormones which then allows the production of the root and the shoot. Because what, what happens is in the callus, if it, is a, if it is prolonged callus, you automatically develop the embryos. Okay, after some time, you, these callus, they, if you subculture it in the hormones, then they start producing the embryos and then slowly they produce the root and the shoot. But for that, of course, subculturing is needed. Organ culture also, you can uh, take the organ, produce the callus, then you know channelize it to produce the uh, plant. Now see, when you are producing a plant in the in vitro condition, you have to be very careful when you're placing them outside in the greenhouse. Why? Because in the in vitro condition, it is a very sterile condition, right? Everything what you're doing is in a sterile environment. So the plants are not habituated to these viruses or other bacteria and other things. So this transfer of this in vitro grown plant to the field for cultivation, here also many steps are required. It just doesn't happen immediately. On top of that, you produce the plant in a media which is quite soft. Okay, even after using the agar, it is quite soft. When you're placing it in the soil, you have to be careful. Okay, this step is known as hardening. And then slowly, slowly you have to expose it outside. You first place a plant outside the tissue culture room. Then you take the plant out to the terrace. Then you place it in the uh, greenhouse and then you take it out to the field. Yes, Manisha, for root growth, you need a high oxygen, high cytooxin, and for shoot growth, you need high cytokine. Okay, Manisha? Okay, so callus culture is just the establishment of callus, and from there you can produce a plant and cell culture is you are maintaining the cell. So here a lot of subculture is required. Okay. Subculture is required to produce uh, this, to maintain the cells. Now why the cell culture is required? This leads to another culture which is known as a protoplast. Protoplast culture. Protoplast is the material, if, if this is your plant cell, if you remember the structure of the plant cell, you have the cell wall and inside that you have the cytoplasm, right, within the cell membrane. So if you leave out the cell wall, what you have inside the cell membrane, that is what is known as a protoplast. So either you can extract the protoplast directly out of the cell, any normal cell, or you can take the protoplast from the, you know, uh, this callus. And protoplast culture has got a lot of use, actually. There are many applications of protoplast culture because these are, uh, you know, mainly used for hybridization purposes. 
for your engineering, genetic engineering purposes. Yes, uh, Trito, absolutely. Cell without the cell wall is that protoplast. So the cell culture helps in the protoplast culture as well. Mainly all of these are somewhat connected, but uh, the naming is based on where, from where you have taken the tissue. Now, one important feature of this uh, plant cell culture, you not only uh, produce or not only go for the plant cell culture for producing the disease-free plant or the hybrid plants, the plants with the desired characteristic or something, uh, okay? But if you want to produce mass growth of a plant, like suppose you have produced an elite quality plant, okay? And you want that to be mass produced. If you go by the normal breeding process, it will take a lot of time. So the shortest way is via your micropropagation. The beauty of this plant cell culture, if you see, if you take a leaf, Okay. To establish a culture, you just need a small section of this leaf. Just a small section, not even the entire leaf. You, you make pieces of these leaves and you take a small section of this leaf, you place it in the media, you get a lot of callus here. From this callus, you just need to take a small bit out. Just a small bit out and place it in a growth media, which is going to help it, the callus to differentiate into root and shoot. Now, just imagine, I want all of you to imagine this. If I take a single leaf, okay, even take a small leaf, you don't have to take the large leaves, a small leaf, the leaf of catharanthus maybe, a leaf of the hibiscus maybe, Okay, you just need a tiny bit to produce so much of callus. From here, you just need a tiny bit to produce a plant. Can you imagine from a single leaf how many numbers of plants we can generate? A numerous number of plants we can generate just from a single leaf. Why? Because a bit of it is producing the callus. From this callus itself, if I make it into pieces, I can produce some around 20, depending upon if, if I consider this a size only, the size which I have drawn. If my callus is of this size, from here also I can produce some 20 plantlets. Can you imagine? This is what is known as your micropropagation. It is a rapid vegetative propagation of plants under in vitro condition of high light intensity, control temperature, and defined nutrient media. So we just have to take a small explant. You have to establish the callus. We can do it in two ways. We can straight away produce the organ. Uh, we can go for organogenesis. Or the better way is to you know produce a callus and then go for the uh, production of the plants or the plantlets and this is the stages so in between here you can introduce the callus formation so stage 0 donor plant selection stage 1 is establishment stage 2 is multiplication stage 3 is root formation stage 4 is acclimatization what I told you, you need to harden it you can't straight away put it in the field. And then is the nursery production. Isn't that interesting? How many of you are new to this idea? How many of you find this concept interesting? Do you think it is saving time? Do you think it is helping us? Or do you think it's a waste of time?
what do you think let me know totally helping absolutely so others also i believe you feel that so this is the picture of micro propagation you just you can produce the plants in such small bottles these are known as your jam bottles okay not the jam that you eat all right don't confuse it with the a mixed fruit jam of kisan this is the jam bottles and this is the plants which have been produced as you can see if you look at this bottle you will see the roots clearly visible here the shoots are obviously very prominent and this uh this opaque color thing that you can see this is the media so you just need such small media and you can produce so many plants and if you look here there are so many jam bottles now this is just a section of the entire uh you know culture room okay so are we now ready for some questions is it a bio can i shoot you some questions now okay so your first question secondary metabolites yes plants uh, tissue cultures are also used to produce the secondary metabolites so they are produced through cell suspension culture anther culture embryo culture meristem culture think think the origin cell suspension culture is what we have already discussed you are taking the a uh, bit of the uh, culture the callus you are placing it in a liquid media okay anther culture is you are taking the anther you are placing it in, in the media from where you can produce the haploid plants i am giving you the uh, concept of each of it so cell suspension culture means you are taking the callus a bit of the callus and placing it in the liquid media anther culture is you are taking the anther and you are placing it in the media to produce the haploid plants okay haploid plants embryo culture we have already discussed you take the embryo you can go for direct or indirect embryogenesis and meristem culture is nothing the example that i give you of the carrot you are taking the cambium that is a meristematic tissue so when we take a meristematic tissue and we go for the culture we initiate the culture that is known as a meristem culture now you can easily tell me you think and tell me where i can i produce a secondary metabolites okay jaypri then 32 you are giving me answer as 1 jayashree ramya okay 1 you see from meristem culture we can straight away go for organogenesis also we can either initiate it to produce a callus and from there direct go for the organogenesis yeah no does it matter we are all discussing we are all learning together as i keep on saying it's not necessary that you have to give the correct answer knowing the correct answer you know learning the correct answer is important participating in the question answer is important so correct answer here is cell suspension culture okay you see when we take the flask here we have play this is my liquid culture right i have placed my callus here so obviously this is going to uh, you know 
okay yeah one more thing the callus here the cells are all aggregated right so when we place it in a suspension culture the cells are loosen out they lose out in the media and if i go on uh, culturing this then i will produce more of these uh, metabolites in this culture and it becomes easy also to uh, extract them okay now the next question in the media to solidify the media we use agar so agar is obtained from very interesting any idea excellent aviksha excellent now can you tell me what is that gelidium geridi that is the correct answer we get the agar from gelidium geridi yes but what is it what is gelidium geridi kailash yes right it is a red algae yes it is the algae it is the algae absolutely it is the algae right good very good excellent so with that i come to the end of today's lecture so this is all that i had to discuss about your uh, animal and plant tissue culture so you already have got the link to download the uh, notes go through the notes read it properly and prepare yourself for the exam i'm sure by the time by this time you have got the idea of what to study what not to study how to study what are the things to focus on yes i i'm sure this was helpful to all of you So thank you and all the best